in this example we are given that in the circuit shown is each emitter has a coil resistance of 2 ohms and we are required to find the reading of each emitter in the circuit you can see there are two emitters connected and as the emitters are connected in series with these branches so we can directly state the resistance of each emitter 2 ohm will be considered in series combination with the branches and if we are required to find the current flowing through these branches we can use kirchhoff's voltage law or you can also solve it by using kirchhoff's current law right now i am handling it with the help of kirchhoff's voltage law in this situation say if i consider a current i1 flowing clockwise in this loop and a current i2 flowing clockwise in this loop so reading of emitter a1 will be i1 and reading of emitter a2 will be current i2 now in this situation to determine the values of i1 and i2 we just write down the kvl equations if we write kvl equation for i1 here you can see in this situation for this i1 we can start from this point and if we move along with current so it will be first a potential drop of 20 volt then it is minus 2i1 and then again 2i1 so it can be written as minus 4i1 then in this branch we can write minus 8i1 minus i2 then it is minus 6i1 is equals to 0 now if we simplify this equation this will give us 4 plus 6 10 plus 8 that will be 18i1 minus 8 i2 is equals to minus 20 if we further simplify this we can uh, divide the whole equation by 2 so this will give us 9 i1 minus 4 i2 is equals to minus 10 that is our equation number 1 now if we write kvl equation for current i2 that is in the second loop and say we start from this point then along with the current we move there will be first a potential drop of uh, 40 volt then it is minus 8 i2 then it is minus 2 i2 because we are taking emitter to be equivalent to a resistance of 2 ohm and then in this uh, direction it will be minus of 8 i2 minus i1 is equals to 0 and if we just uh, simplify this expression here you can see the result uh, we are getting is this 8 i1 minus 18 i2 is equals to 40 and if we divide the whole equation by 2 this will give us 4 i1 minus 9 i2 is equals to 20 that is our equation number 2 now solving this equation 1 and 2 we can easily get the values of i1 and i2 and in this equation from first equation we can find out the value of i2 and we substitute the value of i2 in this say for this from this equation we calculate the value of i2 and the value of i2 we are getting here is this 9 i1 plus 10 divided by 4 if we substitute this value of i2 in this equation see what we are getting here uh, just for limitation of space here i am handling this equation as 4i1 minus 9 the value of i2 i'll substitute as 9i1 plus 10 divided by 4 is equals to 20 so if i simplify this expression see what we are getting here we can take this lcm to be equals to 4 so the cell b 16 i1 minus the cell b 9 multiplied by 9 it is 81 i1 minus the cell b 90 is equals to 4 multiplied by 20 is 80 so if i simplify this uh, then 81 minus 16 will be 65 so this will be written as 65 minus 65 i1 minus 90 is equals to 80 so here the value of i1 i am getting is uh, this will be 170 divided by 65 and this is the value of negative of i1 so this will be minus 170 by 65 
So in this situation, the value I am getting is minus thirty five by seventeen ampere. That will be the value of I one. That is the reading of ammeter A one because from this A one current is flowing here. I have taken I one to be flowing clockwise. But I am getting the value of I one negative. That means actually the current is flowing in this loop in anti-clockwise manner, and the value is thirty five by seventy nine ampere. That is one answer to this problem in magnitude. If we wish to calculate the value of I two, we can substitute the value of I one over here, and we'll get the value of I two. So it will be nine multiplied by this is minus thirty five by seventeen. Plus ten divided by four. So on simplifying here, I am getting the result to be this will be one hundred seventy minus nine into thirty five. So the result here we are getting is minus of three hundred and fifteen plus one seventy divided by sixty eight. So here I am getting the result to be negative of one forty five by sixty eight ampere. That will be the answer to this problem. Again, here I am getting the result negative. That implies the current I two is flowing in anti clockwise manner. But I have taken here I two to be clockwise.